Hello and welcome. My name is Jennifer Ward from the RISM Editorial Center in Frankfurt, Germany. I am Christina Licklater from the U.S. RISM office at Harvard University, United States. This video will show you how to make a music incipit for a RISM record. Machine-readable music incipits are an important component of a RISM record. When transcribed using plain and easy code, a music incipit can serve to illustrate the record. It can be used to identify other, unattributed iterations of a work. And incipits provide valuable information for researchers by allowing them to easily compare versions or synthesize details. This tutorial will demonstrate the steps by which RISM catalogers can add music incipits to their records using plain and easy code, the library standard that enables us to enter music incipits in a format that can be understood by eyes, ears, and machines. We are using RISM's cataloging program, MuseCat. At the end of the video, we will briefly show a way to encode plain and easy if you are working with programs outside of MuseCat. Plain and Easy Code is maintained by YAML, which is the International Association of Music Libraries, Archives, and Documentation Centers, and by RISM. It corresponds to Mark 21 field 031. MuseCat users will also find the code as part of the MuseCat guidelines. Here is the first piece of music we'll transcribe. The first movement of Bach's second cello suite. When creating your RISM record, first complete the fields in the first four sections Library and Information Relations, People and Institutions title and content description, material description. You're now ready to create your incipit. The work number is always one. The movement number is one for the first movement, two for the second, and so forth. The incipit number refers to the order in which your incipits fall either horizontally or vertically, within the movement. If you have a work for solo voice or instrument as here, you'll likely just enter one in this field and transcribe one passage of music. Later, we'll explore more complex works to show how to organize multiple lines into a set of incipits. Now that we've got work, movement, and incipit numbers, We'll fill in the title of the movement or tempo and the instrumentation. The title of the movement and the tempo are transcribed from the piece. Instrumentation uses the RISM abbreviations found in the guidelines. The key is selected from a drop-down menu. Select a key if one can be determined. For the key signature, begin typing and your options will appear. Transcribe the key signature as it is on the source. If there are no accidentals in the key signature, as in A minor or C major, leave the key signature field blank. Here we will insert a B flat because this work is in D minor. The time signature here, 3, 4, is encoded as the number 3 followed by a slash, followed by a four. This piece uses a bass clef. Choose the clef you need from the drop-down menu. The treble and bass clefs are helpfully labeled as such next to their codes G2 and F4. The last field we'll add in this incipit section of our RISM record is the music incipit itself. 
Once you begin typing in this field, you'll see your insipid begin to appear below the text box with the clef, key signature, and time signature filled in for you according to the choices you've made above. In plain and easy code, pitches are entered according to their note names A to G. Durations are specified with numbers. Rests are indicated by the minus sign. Octaves are indicated by a comma for pitches below middle C and apostrophes for pitches above middle C. For example, type a comma, a four, and the letter A. Type an eight and you will have eighth notes. Six, sixteenth notes. Four, quarter notes. Two, half notes. One, whole notes. Rests use the minus sign. One, minus, whole note rest. Two, minus, half note rest. Bar lines are made using a slash. Note that MuseCat does not perform any checks if your rhythm is not musically correct. Compare your insipid with the source and type what you see. In plain and easy code, we specify octave first, then duration, then pitch. This excerpt begins with a pair of eighth notes joined by a beam. Open your beam by typing a curly bracket. Then type a comma for the octave below middle C, then an eight for the eighth note, and a D for the pitch. Next, you just have to type an F. Plain and easy code defaults to the previous duration and octave. Close your beam with another curly bracket. And that's the first quarter note value of measure one. The next beat is a quarter note A. That's four for quarter note and the letter A. It's tied to the following note, which will indicate with a plus sign. This run of sixteenth notes starts with a curly bracket. Enter a six for a sixteenth note, then A, F, E, and D. Close your bracket. Now we need a bar line that's a slash. Continue transcribing until you have at least six notes or two measures. Use your best judgment to create an insipid that makes musical sense and gives enough information to identify the opening. Omit dynamics and slurs. Keep in mind that we are just encoding the notation and not striving for an exact representation of the page. Anything important that can't be expressed in the encoding can be mentioned as a note. To continue this insipid, accidentals are notated with an X for a sharp and a B for a flat. For a natural sign, use a lowercase n. So, open curly bracket, X, C sharp, then E. Let's try a song now. Insipit 1.1.1 will be the beginning of the piano part.
Then insipit 1.1.2 will be the beginning of the vocal line, which sounds simultaneously. Note that we have an option to include a text insipit, which will appear as a text underlay. The text insipit does not necessarily have to be the same length as the music insipit. Enter what makes sense for each element. Now, we'll do a string quartet. While the first violin part often contains the melody in a string quartet, this is not always the case. Transcribe whichever instrument contains the melody. Here, Incipit 1.1.1 is taken from the cello part. If the melody doesn't begin immediately, but is preceded by some preparatory gesture, such as an ostinato, Transcribe what comes first, then transcribe the melody. Here, Incipit 1.4.1 is the second violin's A's, and the first violin's entry in the second measure is Incipit 1.4.2. Plain and easy code can also accommodate mensural notation. When selecting a clef from the drop-down list, choose one with a plus sign next to the letter to signal mensural notation. If you are encoding a transposing instrument, notate its part at sounding pitch. The MuseCat guidelines include a table for transposing instruments. Consult the MuseCat guidelines for further details on music incipits, including elements such as trills, and grace notes. There are other contexts in which you might be encoding music insipits, such as if you are encoding insipits for the use in MARC records outside of MuseCat. Most cataloging systems, apart from MuseCat, won't have the ability to render music insipits in a visible form. To avoid mistakes and guesswork, we can recommend using the Verovio Plain and Easy Editor to create insipits. And in fact, Verovio is used in MuseCat to render the insipits. Select your clef, key signature, and time signature. Then begin encoding the music. When you are done, copy your music insipit and paste it into your cataloging program's 031 subfield P. You will have to re-enter other elements of the 031, such as insipit number, clef, key signature, etc., but using the Verovio editor ensures mistake-free encoding of the music. In conclusion, Music insipits are a valuable addition to any RISM record. They aid identification of your musical source and the piece it represents, and help scholars in their research. All music insipits are searchable in the RISM online catalog. Thank you for your attention.